Hello everyone and welcome to another Guru Golf video. Today we're in the simulator and we're going to be putting my new fitted driver up against my old driver and see if there are any improvements. I'll also give you an update on how I'm going with my improvement plan for 2024. So firstly I'll show you my old driver which is this Nike Covert. So this is 10 years old and it was bought straight off the rack so there was no fitting process. And it was a good driver. Uh, the only thing near the end I found if I wasn't hitting it dead in the center it just wasn't going the same distance that it used to. Uh, so I took the plunge and I was fitted for a new driver at Club Champion in Sydney uh, by the managing director there, Paul Jenner. Uh, I was actually fitted for a whole bag while I was there, but for today, I'll just focus on the driver. Uh, so to begin with, uh, I hit a few with my old driver to get a baseline. Uh, and to be honest, before we did the driver, uh, I did the iron session where I hit a lot of balls and I was recovering from a back issue, so by the time I got to the driver, I was very tired. Now, <clears throat> these are photos of the screen, so they're not the best quality, but you can see here the numbers from the old driver, and the main thing to notice is where I was striking it on the face, which was a lower heel hit, and that's pretty standard for me with that club. Uh, now, after looking at those numbers, Paul thought the TaylorMade Stealth 2 Plus was probably gonna be the right driver for me, so he, he bought out that head uh, along with a few different ones. Uh, and then um, we had some aftermarket shafts as well. And as you can see here from the image, they had a lot of shafts to choose from. Now I've never been one to worry too much about shafts, uh, but the next 20 minutes there changed my mind forever. Uh, each shaft I tried slowly changed the impact zone and the numbers uh, until we came to this. Now the distance and speed numbers aren't that much different. And I put that down to fatigue from hitting so many balls, but uh, I had a high ball flight with the Knight Covert and, and this shaft really brought that down. So, and uh, as you can see, I was hitting the middle of the club face. Uh, so now we had the shaft, uh, we tried a few more heads to see what was best. Uh, we tried the Titleist TSR2, uh, the Cobra Aerojet and the Callaway Paradigm Triple Diamond. Uh, now I hit the Cobra very high on the face and it just didn't feel nice. Uh, the Callaway was hard to find the middle and I just had inconsistent strikes around the face. Uh, the Titleist was a very close second, but the Stealth 2 Plus was definitely the best one, uh, both in performance and feel. Uh, so the shaft we went for was the VA Composites Drago 65. Uh, the thing about this shaft is it isn't just stiff or extra stiff. Uh, it's a combination of stiff in the midsection and extra stiff at each end. Uh, now I've used the driver for 10 rounds now and I am seeing some improvements and I am hitting the middle of the face a lot more. Uh, I'm still getting those low heel shots but they are finishing up in a lot better position than I used to with the Nike. Uh, but let's put them head to head on the MLM2 Pro now. Uh, I'm getting it 20 shots with each, alternating in five shot groups. I'll take away the bottom five at the end, we'll have the best 15 shots for each and we'll see how the numbers stack up. Let's get into it. Right, here we go. Ready to go put these two drivers head to head. A little bit of a warm up, so nice and loose. We are start with five shots with the stealth. All right, last one, this first set. All right, moving on to the, the Nike. Uh, you see I've got two wood just up there, I put in as a two wood, so um, you can di distinguish between the two. Oh, and there's that heel hit. The other thing I didn't realize on this was just how worn the grip was. After 10 years of use. Just not getting out of the middle. There's the first fire from the Nike. Thank <laughs> you. 
There you go, second go with the Nike. You can just feel the different flex in this shaft. Low heel. That's more out of the middle. Yeah, see that was another thing with this driver. Sometimes I thought I'd hit a really good shot and it would just go straight left. Oh, I forgot to change the club over at the end of, for that last set, but I can do that in the software afterwards. Yeah, that was a good one. Oh, there's that low heel. All right, last set each. Ooh, maybe 20 shots each, which is too much. Come on. All right, last one here for the stealth. See if we make it a good one. No, oh, no. <laughs> oh, that's the way to finish. Oh, that's just tiredness. Anyway, oh, that's a stealth. All right, last one. Let's see if we can make this last one better than the last one with the stealth. No, that's bad too. Oh, uh, well. That's just trying too hard. Well, there we go. 40 shots hit, 20 with each. Uh, let's put the numbers together and see how they fared. Well, here are the numbers, and it's no real surprise that the Stealth came out on top on all metrics, which I'm happy about, as it seems uh, getting fitted wasn't a complete waste of money. Uh, distance was 14 meters longer. Ball speed was up seven miles an hour. Launch angle was 1.7 degrees lower, which is what I was really after with the new driver. Uh, club speed was up nearly three miles an hour, smash factor was up a bit, and spin rate with the Stealth was 300 RPM lower. So just the feel of the clubs was chalk and cheese. Uh, the shaft and the Nike made me feel like I really had to work hard on the downswing, where the Stealth seemed more stable through the swing and, and hitting the center more often was, was always a plus. Uh, the off-center hits on the Stealth still ended up close to the target uh, at a decent length, where the Nike was very unforgiving. Uh, so there we have it for the head-to-head. -head. And no shock at the winner there. Now an update on how my improvement training is going. Uh, I'm pleased to say I completed everything I planned to this week. Uh, I used a simulator twice, and I've come up with a club schedule that you can see here uh, that will get me through my entire bag every two weeks, hitting 25 shots with each club, making it 100 shots per session. Uh, the one thing I will change though is the order I practice with the clubs. Uh, both sessions this week I started with the short iron, moved to the long iron, then the mid iron and finished on the driver. But by the time I got to the driver I was worn out. Uh, so I think from now on I'll start with the mid iron and move to the driver, then the long iron and finish on the short iron where I'll practice different distances, not just full shots, as a bit of a warm down. I started my ripstick training uh, with four sessions and I'm already seeing some improvements. Uh, so I'm excited to see where that's going to go to. Uh, I spoke before about being worn out in the simulator, but how I feel after the ripstick training is on another level. Uh, I had three sessions with the well putt mat. Uh, and when you have a training session, uh, you get a score depending on what training course you use. Uh, and I've started out with the orange course, which is the easiest one to begin with. Uh, and my first session I scored 49 out of 73. And I was just, just putting the ball down and, and hitting them. 
Uh, but after that session, uh, I treated every putt as if I was on the course and I was lining them up just like I would on the green. Uh, and the second score was 58 out of 73 and the final one was 68 out of 73. So straight away I'm seeing some improvement and I feel it is transferring onto the course, uh, but we'll talk about that more next week uh, when I'm gonna take you through the last round I had with the social club. Uh, if you've made it this far, thanks for watching. Uh, be sure to like and subscribe and I'll see you next week.